Hi, welcome again to A Voice in the Desert. Today we're going to be speaking about a very, very important topic, the basis of Christianity. The title today for the message is going to be called The Case for the Risen Christ. Okay, uh, Christianity is a religion of once dead, now alive. Christianity in its very essence is a resurrection religion. The concept of resurrection lies at the heart of Christianity. Disprove the resurrection and Christianity is no more. However, at the real heart of Christianity is that Jesus did exist, but was he the real Messiah, the Son of God, and had he been resurrected to be in heaven, and that he would be back to reign as the only and one true king. In order to know this, we must read the original Word of God and examine it for the truth. In other words, the Bible. We have to go to the Bible and check for it. Well, the following, we know the following reasons of why He has risen, okay? And we're just going to mention a couple of them. After the death of Jesus on the cross, we know that He was buried in a tomb. The Roman government sealed the tomb to ensure that He there would be no meddling with the tomb because the Pharisees were complaining that his disciples might take the body. The penalty for breaking that seal was such a horrible thing that none would risk it. So no Roman would allow anybody to come close to that tomb and try to open it because they know it was going to cost them their lives. The Jewish leaders placed a Roman guard on the tomb where Jesus was laying. The penalty to the soldier for neglecting their charge was a slow, torturous death. The disciples went to the tomb not expecting him to be risen. Okay, Jesus appeared many times over a period of 50 days to over 500 people in many different ways and locations. Jesus also appeared to Saul on the road to Damascus. He is considered the greatest Christian leader of all times, writing two-thirds of the New Testament. That's correct, folks. That was Saul, okay, which was later called Paul. Um, he gave up the status that he enjoyed as a Pharisee in the tradition of the Jews and later died for his testimony that Jesus Christ was the risen Lord and Savior. So a man that persecuted the Jews... Uh, the Christian Jews for their belief in Christianity, okay, the one that used to torture them and kill them, which was later Christ was revealed to that um, to Saul, okay, he became a believing and professing Christian to the end, and he wrote two thirds of the New Testament, okay, to the point that he gave his life and he died for our risen Savior Jesus Christ. Millions have testified that Jesus had made himself real to them over the centuries. And many have been willing to be martyred rather than recant their testimony that he is alive. He fulfilled Old Testament prophecies on his first coming that he would not see corruption, experience physical de de decay, but would rise again. The odds of those prophecies being fulfilled were impossible in the natural, but it happened according to all the details and to the day that it was predicted in the Bible. So we all know, all know this is true, okay? He gave his resurrection power to us that are born again in Christ Jesus, okay? That's what uh, Jesus Christ did when he was resurrected. We are assured that he is alive because when he rose, he prayed the Father that he would receive the Holy Spirit, okay? And that we would also receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes us to know him when we believe. In John 14, 15, If ye love me, keep my commandments and I will pray to the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive but it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you 
I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So Jesus says, I'm leaving this world to be with my Father and sit at His right hand, but I will ensure that I will send my Holy Spirit to be with you at all times, so that way that you are not alone. We're going to read again, okay, in Acts 1.8. It says, But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. His Spirit is poured out in our hearts, giving us love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, kindness, self-control, faith, and hope. This is read in Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So we're already talking about the characteristics of Christ. The same Spirit that raised Him from the dead gives life to our mortal bodies. His bo he provides healing and He will rise us up in the day of the Lord. In Romans 8.10 it reads, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. We can receive resurrection life that makes us to be born again. We become a new creation. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. That is in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 through 19. We can receive forgiveness for all our sins, past, present, and future. That's in Hebrews 10, 12, 23. And here is the rest of it. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us after that he had said before. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds, and I will write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus Christ. What this is basically is telling us that Jesus did the ultimate. By dying on the cross, he forgave all our sins and we were reborn with him. Okay? And we are able to enter into the holiest of holies only because of the blood shed by Jesus Christ on Calvary. Okay? Hebrews 10.20 reads, By a new living way, which he hath consecrated for us, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Okay? So Christ continues to say that he continues to wash us. Okay? But it also says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful to his promise okay what it's saying is we have to hang on to our faith we have to be strong because these promises that christ has given us upon his death and sharing in his resurrection and being able to go to heaven these are promises that he's going to keep for those that have confessed him follow him and keep his statutes and laws okay we can walk in a sense of god's presence because he sent the holy spirit to live in us and we can find this in second corinthians 2 
verses 10 through 16. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it for your sakes, forgave I it in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach the gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord, I had no rest in my spirits because I found not Titus my brother. But taking my leave of them, I went from thence into Macedonia. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, in them that are saved, and in them that perish. To the one we are the server of death unto death, and to others the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? This is Paul writing this, okay, to the church of Corinthians, okay? We are at all times continued to stand straight, faithful, truthful to the teachings of our Christ and not be led by false words, by false ministries, by other false doctrines, other false religions, other false gods, okay? We can have hope when there is no hope because the Holy Spirit now leads us and encourages us to know that all things do work together for the good of those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. And that you can find it, my friends, in Romans 5, 1 through 5. What should we do to receive this resurrection power? Well, we should do it it's very simple. Receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And in Romans 10, 9 through 13, the word of the Lord says the following, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It is very simple, my friends. All you have to do is accept Lord Jesus Savior as your King, as your Redeemer, as your Deliverer, as the person that's going to give you eternal life. The Holy Spirit that lives within you will convict you and let you know that Jesus is your Savior. Okay? In Romans, um, also in John, sorry, let me just go back again. Also in John, it reads the following. John 1, 10 through 12. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. It's very easy. Those that believe in Jesus have become automatically sons of God because they have believed in, in Jesus who is also the son of God okay uh, another one is when we walk in Christ another one is that we're supposed to be walking in Christ okay and how do we do this we're gonna do this by praying every day meaning communicating with your father about everything not just about the big problems of the big um, successes you've had but of everything the Lord is interested of everything in your life in Jude 20 it says but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost okay so yeah it also tells you to pray in the Spirit okay so that way you can continue that communion with Christ okay also if I am a Christian 
I am not worried only about saving myself, but also equally worried that everyone around me may be also saved. But seeing that the salvation of God comes through me to others, and the great way is by intercession, meaning praying for the Lord to reveal himself to them, also through my testimony, which is one of the most powerful ways to show Christ and what he has done in my life and in your life. The other way is also by evangelizing to others about Christ, speaking to Christ, okay? Also, read God's word daily, which is the Bible. The same spirit that the risen Christ sent that lives in you, that same spirit wrote the Bible through the prophets and the apostles. He will cause you to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ as you become more like him. So your relationship with the Holy Spirit that was left behind, okay? He is the one that's going to show you how to become more like Christ, okay? In Romans 8, 14, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. This is, it can't get any easier than this, okay? The other part that you have to do, okay, once you have become and accepted Jesus as your Savior, you have to find a group of believers to meet with on a weekly basis for fellowship and encouragement and ensure that it is sound doctrine that they are sharing and this can be ensured by measuring every word against your Bible. If it is not the same as what is written in the Bible, disregard it and run away and find another place to make your fellowship. Okay? In Acts 2, verse 40 through 47, the Word of God reads, and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Savior yourself from this onward generation, that they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers." And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they continued, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness, and singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved this is telling you that when you become part of the family of Christ we are to help each other we are to let no one be in need of the brethren we should attend to all the cares and needs as Christians that we are okay Another one is you're supposed to share your story with someone who doesn't know Christ to encourage them to receive Christ in their heart. 1 Peter 3.15 But sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Okay, what it's telling you in Peter is that anybody that comes to us and asks us what is this hope where do you get this hope where do you get this strength there's something different about you the way you live the way you help people um it's totally different it's not common in this world well peter is telling you that with humility but with holy fear 
of God, you are to share the story of Christ. What he's done in your life, what he's done in the life of others, what he's done in the life of the world, okay? Everything with everyone. Remember always that the people will know who Christ is once you share his word on who he is. Also, ask the Holy Spirit within you to show you how to do it and to intercede on your behalf also. The other way others will know about Christ is if you leave the four walls of the church and do what he commissioned you to do, to preach his word to the whole ends of the earth. And then, only then, our work is done and he will come for us. The case has been made. Christ has risen. He has risen. Amen. And my name is Caesar, and I'm a voice in the desert. If there is anyone here that is listening right now and wants to leave their old self behind, and this message has shown you that some needed changes has to take place and you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your savior or you're running away from God for whatever reason and you want to reconcile yourself back to him I want you to go ahead at this very moment bow your heads to all those that are listening and pray the salvation prayer and repeat after me dear God in heaven I come to you in the name of Jesus I acknowledge to you that I am a sinner and I am sorry for my sins and the life that I have lived. I need your forgiveness. I believe that your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary and died for my sins. And now I am willing to turn from my sin. You said in your holy word, Romans 10, 9, that if we confess the Lord, our God, and believe in our hearts, that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. Right now, I confess Jesus as the Lord of my soul. With all my heart, I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. This very moment, I accept Jesus Christ as my own personal Savior. According to His Word, right now, I am saved. Thank you, Jesus, for your unlimited grace, which has saved me from my sins. I thank you, Jesus, that your grace never leads to license, but rather it always leads to repentance. Therefore, Lord Jesus, transform my life so that I may bring glory and honor to you alone and not to myself. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me and giving me eternal life. Amen. If you have just prayed this simple prayer of salvation, I welcome you to the kingdom of God. I welcome you to his house, for therefore you are saved and rejoice. God bless you. Hi all, we didn't want to let you go without giving you our schedule, okay? Uh, and where we're located. Our schedule of our podcast is every Wednesdays. I want you to come and listen to a new refreshing word from God. You can find us in the following uh, social medias, such as Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash a voice in the desert 2017. You can also find us at Twitter at HTTPS semicolon forward slash forward slash twitter.com forward slash a the desert. Also username at the desert. You can also find us at uh, at our blog, okay, which is mywalkwithmycreator.blogspot.com. Uh, you can also get our RSS feed from uh, iTunes at a voice in the desert dot forward slash RSS and lipsing is spelled L I B S Y N. And you can also find us at our main webpage where you will find all our archived uh, podcasts, which will be a voice in the desert dot lipsing dot com. L I B S Y N. Okay, so that's where you can find us and uh, hope we see you there. Remember, uh, give us a like, give us a comment, uh, share your experience with us and your experience with God. Okay, so take care, folks. And once again, thank you for listening. Bye.